Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. We're taking a look at a keyboard from a company I have yet to take a look at. Um, this keyboard was sent out to me by whateek.com uh, in exchange for my honest review. They have no editorial comment on this. I share the video. They get to see it as soon as you get to see it. Um, I've been working with them for a while uh, and they're a great company. Great bunch of people over there and I really appreciate the help and support that they've given to the community. Um, they always participate in our budget keeps giveaways and they're just just good people over there. But today we're taking a look at the Mashinique. Am I saying that right? I'm going to say Mashinike, but I'm going to say it's Mashinique. The, some of these names, I don't know. This is the K500F. It's an 81 key. I know they call these TKLs, but for me a TKL it's a TKL. Um, I know this it, TKL because it's 10 keyless, so it doesn't have the number pad. But for me, a TKL is specifically this. This is a TKL for me. This is the uh, M3 from Monsky. But for me, this is a TKL. So it, to me, it gets confusing when they use it on other ones. But I do know that it's just one thing that you have to look out for. Now this, if I'm not mistaken, is a transparent keyboard. But again, this is one of those keyboards that the majority of the keyboards I review, I do my best to only do a quick overview about it so that I can kind of discover and be surprised along the way with you guys. So I don't know much else about this keyboard other than it might be transparent. It has a knob. It is a 75% 81 key, um, has rollover, and I believe is wired only, if I'm not mistaken. Mm, yep, it's wired. All right, so we're dealing with a wired only Mashinique K500F. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we've got. All right, before taking a look at the keyboard, I just want to see what we have in here. We have a user manual, which is just a folded up page. We also have I have a nice collection of these. Um, if possible, avoid using these. If you if they slip, uh, this plastic against especially softer plastics will scratch them. So I don't know why manufacturers are still including these, but if you have these, I, I would recommend using one of these over one of these. Now we have your horseshoe switch cap puller. Now we also have some switches with some really bent up legs. This, this uh, box suffered a little bit in travel. Oh uh, yeah, this pin is, is about done. I kind of prefer that if they include extra switches, they're going to be usable. Ooh, that's a tactile. This is a G dot R U L E G rule. All right, this is a switch I've not heard of before, and I gotta say, off uh, initial impressions, I don't recognize that mold. Hmm, but. It's a nice tactile switch. It has a little bit stronger of a bump than a brown. So it's not extremely, it's, it's a little light to medium tactile, but it has a lighter spring, I would guess in the 45 gram range. But feels nice and it looks like it does, looks like it might be a long pull. It might be about a 3.8 millimeter total travel. And of course we have a USB-A to USB-C uh, with a elbow uh, cable. So your standard fare. And here we are with the Machinique K500F. And it is a transparent keyboard. I've got to say this is actually one of the nicer transparent keyboards that I think I've seen. One of the reasons why I say that is that despite the keycaps being transparent, I can still read the legends quite well. Um, now this is one that I really would have liked if they would have included some extra keycaps. Um, 
but you can't point them off. Now it does have a protective plastic layer over here, so let's go ahead and take this off so we can take a better look at this keyboard. Well, that was a lot of plastic and it was very attached. It's a little bit lighter than I'd like, though we do, it does look like we have a nice thick silicone pad below the uh, PCB inside of the case and just whoop. for being plastic um i don't know what material these are but for being plastic it has a pretty good sound i would say it's almost almost hockey honestly now we have the USB-C connector on the side of the keyboard there. That's why we have the angled cable that comes with it. So we can still keep things a little bit neat. We have a nice metallic knob. Yeah, that's a decent knob. It is metallic, which is always nice. Not fond of those uh, plastic knobs that have been like electroplated. Yeah. That's much better. So it just adds that more sense of the different uh, touch, material touch. Now let's take a look at these keycaps here. Now, honestly, I'm not usually the fondest of putting the sub legends below the primary legend, but that's just me. Um, let me see these keycaps. See what these keycaps come in at. I would say 1.2. 1.3 1.3 millimeters so it's a decent thickness it's probably adding to the fact that they sound pretty good yeah see i want to put it this way <laughs> now it looks like this profile yep yeah, that's a looks like an oem sculpted profile probably adding to that little bit more thickness but the or that little bit more stockiness in there but it's probably also the fact that we have a pc plate Now, this is becoming a lot more common. Um, the PC plates instead of steel plates, and that is a good thing. Um, now, don't get me wrong. I think that aluminum plates should also be an option. I don't see those that often, but PC plate is, in my opinion, far better than a steel plate. Now, taking a look at these stabilizers here. Ooh, they are very well attacked. Oh, this one's a little loose. It's actually clicking. This side's pretty good. That can be fixed easily with just a piece of tape. But let's go ahead and take these out. But it would probably help to take the switch out first. Yeah, these are definitely pre-lube switches as there's no ping in them whatsoever. All right, so the stabilizers are pre-lubricated. Oh though they have the older feet the older um stems as you can see they have that little foot that sticks out that has to be clipped i haven't honestly seen one of these in quite some time the stabilizers that have been coming out lately are all new and are flat at the bottom so that's something that will have to be done when i come back to it it does not appear to have screw holes for um pcb mounted stabilizers so we're going to be stuck with these and these are the milky i'm not usually a fan of these but when putting these in and listening to it it doesn't sound bad at all me just so it does look like we have like we said the nice thick the silicone below and there does seem to be what feels like a silicone rubber between the plate and the PCB now it is a north facing keyboard so some people might say but I guess I, I don't think that north facing is as much of an issue as it used to be especially with newer switches moldings have been I can't tell if this one is one, 
but most moldings on newer switches have been adjusted so that there is no north facing interference. I gotta say, I do like these switches. Like I said, they are badged G rule and on the site they are called GR Crystal. This is a GR Crystal tactile. It has actuation force of 40 plus or minus 10 grams. Bottom out force of 50. A travel, what? Total travel of 2.2? That's not right. Hmm. That's odd. I it might have messed up. Because that doesn't sound right. Anyway, we have 16.8 million colors. We have the digital dial that's going to work for us on a number of situations here. It is available in a clear white. And then this one is a um the clear black, but they also have a clear purple and a clear green. I think, honestly, by looking at them, my opinion, the white and the black look the best with the purple right behind it. The green, mm, some people might like it, though. Um, definitely has noise-canceling foam. It is gasket mount, and you can see it has some flex. It's not crazy flexy, but you can definitely feel the flex, and you can see the gaskets there. Now, it does have a lot of branding all over the place, but I don't know. Some might actually like this. It does look, it has almost like a retro futuristic tech kind of feel to it, almost like a Neuromancer. I've got to say, these are probably so far some of my favorite clear keycaps because I can clearly see them. With so many other clear keycaps, it's so hard to read the legends. It just, it, it, it's a little straining. All right, so let's go ahead and plug it in. Let's look at this RGB, huh? All right. Oh yeah, that's got some RGB. We've got a caps lock indicator. We've got a, I'm gonna guess that's a Windows lock indicator. And I'm not sure what the last one would be. All right. Definitely has some bright RGBs. Now, this by default is the volume. Background effect can be obtained with a. Oh, and that's play. Press this play instead of mute. Hmm. I wonder if that could be programmed. But if I long press it and hold for three seconds, it blinks, then it allows me to control the brightness of the RGB. And turn it off all the way. But pressing and holding again will take me back to the volume. The plugin. Though I'm not, I don't get why the presses play. All right, and function enter will take you through solid colors. And to turn it off, function space bar. And function backspace is how you enter the customization mode. That was about the easiest onboard keyboard color programming that I've ever seen. Press on the same key Press once on the key, it'll turn the light on. Press several times and you'll cycle through the colors. So function backspace puts you in that programming mode. Function backspace takes you back out of it. But for onboard, that is the quickest and easiest way that I've seen to program colors. And I gotta say, that's pretty cool. That is definitely pretty cool. You got any other tricks up your sleeve? All right, so function windows will lock the windows key and long pressing function and escape for three seconds will reset the entire keyboard all right and then we have the standard uh, multimedia short touch now also on here this is something that i definitely like seeing on keyboards i'm used to seeing it on every um, ACO keyboard but that being on there means that somebody actually took a look at this and not that long ago uh july 5th it looks like 
Um, no, 6 5. Uh, June. Yeah, yeah it had been June 5th. Got it backwards. June 5th. And it passed. So I like that it includes that. That means somebody touched this and made sure that everything worked prior to it being shipped out to a customer. So that's a good thing. So I've got to say, for a transparent keyboard, I like it. I like the design. I like the lines of it. I actually like the keycaps, though once the lights were on, the legends do become a little bit harder um, to read. Other than that, this seems quite solidly built. We don't have any rattle. And we don't really have much of that, that loud clack that sometimes will happen with um, with thinner keycaps. Um, and without that block, or I should call them space bar silicone inserts, I guess. So I got to say, off the bat, just taking a look at this, I like it. I um, For the first Machinique that I've taken a look at, I've got to say, it, it definitely... Um, hits the spot and um, I think it's well built. Um, basic features, I love the fact that you can program it so easily without the software. I do will have, will want to take a look at the software to see if I can program this to be mute instead of um, play. But I don't know sometimes on these knob keyboards they just they don't want you reprogramming the knob for some reason. I don't know. Just the specs. Today we're taking a look at the Machinique K500F. It is a transparent, wired, 75% 81 key with knob pre-built. It does come with a PC plate and clear switches, tactile for this one, that do appear to be pre-lubed. And they also include a couple of extra switches in the box. This keyboard manufacturer retail price of $76.99 on whatgeek.com. The weight of this keyboard is 820 grams. The chin sits at 19 millimeters, while the base sits at 25 millimeters above the typing surface, giving you a default typing angle of five degrees. Raising the first included set of flip out feet will take the back height to 32 millimeters, changing the angle of typing to eight degrees. Using the final set of flip out feet will raise the back up to 40 millimeters changing your angle of typing to 11 degrees. So today we took a look at the Machinique K500F. Um, for the first one that I've taken a look at, I, I gotta say this is a pretty pretty nice keyboard. Um, I like the switches, I like that it has a PC plate, I like the dampening on it, I like the knob, though I'm hoping that I could program it um, to be mute when I press instead of play because that doesn't make too much sense to me. Um, my Windows PC is still waiting on a couple of parts, so I'll have to take a look at the software when I come back to this. Um, I will be coming back to this as I want to switch out um, the keycaps and try different combinations to foam or anything. Though, I gotta say, this keyboard sounds pretty good stock. Um, out of the box, for a lot of people, this is going to be more than sufficient, and especially if you like RGBs, this is an RGB cloud. Um, the only thing I, I would have done, because if you're doing a transparent board, why don't you do downward shining RGB? Um, it kind of seems like it's a uh, opportunity lost, but that's just nitpicking. As far as this keyboard, it sounds, it feels very nice. Um, I'm going to put it into my schedule to drive it or test drive it as my daily um, though I've got a couple ahead of it so but it'll make it there um, and the keycaps though they're clear and I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of clear keycaps these are some of the better ones I've come across though like I said the legends do kind of disappear once the lights turn on um, anyway I think that um, because of the I couldn't find if this was a PC or an ABS. If I had to guess, I would say it's an ABS plastic. But I think that I can make this keyboard really thock and clack. I think those are the two sound profiles that'll come out of this. Though, I am going to try it for creamy as well when I come back to it. Um, so I will be coming back to this keyboard here in the near future, opening it up, seeing what, what's all in there. But I've got to say, I, I like it. And especially for the price, 
um, $75. It's keyboards are getting better and the prices are starting to come down. Uh, in stock keyboards are becoming more popular and prevalent. Group buys are slowly but surely going away. And we're having a lot of companies like, well, companies that did group buys before that are now starting to do in stock keyboards at a very good price. MKC75, I'm looking at you. Anyway, I, for one, am quite pleased with the way the, the in stock keyboard market is going. And I've got to say, I hope that it continues going down this way. I think that we'll see more QMK via keyboards, though. I really do hope that these manufacturers stay away from doing a half, not a full implementation of VIA, because a lot of these keyboards that do have VIA, when you try to do KC any key or try to do some more advanced features that VIA offers, it, they just don't work. Um, so I really, really wish they would just build off of QMK. And if they don't add it to the QMK repo, they should at least have their own repository on GitHub. It's free. And if I have access to the firmware, then I know I can make changes that I want to make to it. So that's the only thing that I still see that needs to be coming. But we're seeing a lot more PC plates. We're seeing keyboards that sound much better out of the box stock. Uh, switches that are pre-lubricated or don't need any lubrication. They don't have no ping whatsoever. And solidly built keyboards that feel like they will last. Also, you know, keyboards that are being inspected by actual human beings before being shipped out to a customer. So I've got to say, for first impressions, I like what, I've, what I see. And I'm going to go ahead and um, I'd like to hear what your guys' thoughts are on it, especially if you own it. But if you have any thoughts or ideas or something you'd like me to take a look at once I do dive into this keyboard, please put them down in the comments below. Let's start a conversation. But for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the Mashnique K500F in this uh, transparent black color with the ice tactile, the GR, GR ice tactile. G rule, G rule, makes me think of a rapper. That Ja rule, I think it's Ja rule. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this review. Let me know what you think about this keyboard. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.